Hello, and welcome to We Built This White Lake. My name is Amy Van Loon, and I'm the Executive Director of the White Lake Area Chamber of Commerce. And joining me today is Mark Weesies and Ryan Weesies from Weesies Brothers Farms. And uh, We Built This is going to be a series of introducing and interviewing our businesses to the community, so giving them an opportunity to share a little bit about what they do and where they came from. Um, so with that, welcome, gentlemen. It's great to have you with us today. And um, I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to you, Mark, if you want to tell us a little bit about uh, Weesey's Brother Farms and what you guys do there. Okay. Um, we're a, a fourth generation family business, and um, we have a lot of different things that we do, but uh, I'll speak a little bit about the greenhouse end of things, okay. and I'll let Ryan speak about some of the other services nice. that we offer. All right. Um, I handle a lot of the uh, the greenhouse end of things, and so that's a, we have four retail garden centers, and um, of course located right here at the farm in Montague, which most people are, are used to coming out there. Mm -hmm. We also have a store, and the next store we put in was in Manistee, a retail okay. store on uh, 31 Manistee, and also um, just off the highway in Hart. And, uh, and we also have a store down in Nunica on M104. Mm. So um, retail, and also a big part of that uh, uh, plant business is our wholesale business. We wholesale um, flowers, hanging baskets, uh, perennials all over the state, um, uh, heavy to uh, the Petoskey, mm. um, Traverse City area. Mm. And, um, and then south, um, we go down to the Chicago area with some plants too for many years. Um, to established um, uh, garden centers, no box stores, just okay. uh, retail garden centers, much like ours. Nice. Um, and we offer what well, the plants that we offer, everything from hanging baskets to uh, flats of annuals, mm -hmm. four and a half inch pots of specialty annuals, combination planters, um, uh, full line of perennials, as well as trees and shrubs and, and nursery stock. Nice. Um, much of which is grown right on the right here on the farm. All of our annuals and vegetables and herbs are grown from seed on the farm. Uh, perennials are about 50-50, bought in from local sources and grown. And uh, nursery stock, there's lots of great nurseries just south of here mm -hmm. that we do a lot of business with, bringing in trees and shrubs. Okay. So. And Weesey's does a nice job of um, providing us with the baskets and the pots and the causeway flowers that we mm -hmm. see in both Montague and Whitehall. So yeah. you guys do a great job of um, putting those together and um, beautifying our community. Mm -hmm. So yep, thank great. You. Yes. Um, yeah. Ryan, you want to? Yeah, I kind of run the day-to-day uh, -day, uh, landscaping part of our business. So okay. we kind of, wherever one of our greenhouses are, is where we're probably doing landscape work um, up and down Lake Michigan and stuff. So take care of, we're, you know, full service, lawn mowing and the fertilizer, irrigation, all that kind of stuff. And then we, we also do a lot of hardscape installs, which are the, you know, outdoor patios and kitchens and that kind of thing okay. and that stuff. So... Take care of commercial, residential, basically anything in the green industry that you want, we would take care of. So um, that's kind of my day-to-day -day type stuff that I sure. do. Um, and uh, we also um, we do have our field crops still. We we'd grow about 100 acres of uh, field corn. Wow. We have a little bit of sweet corn for the fall, which okay. if you're in this area, it's grown to be some pretty popular sweet corn. Um, and we got quite a following for that. And we also do uh, some pumpkins in the in the fall, and we put on a kids program. It's an anti-bullying campaign. That that's a lot of fun too for us. So bringing a lot of area schools, which has uh, been something that's really grown over the years, and it's it's been a fun thing to be a part of. So amazing um, work being done behind the scenes. I think a lot of the people that go to Weezy's just sees the they see the greenhouse and mm -hmm. they see the hanging baskets and product that is grown and, and provided there. Um, so a lot of different services that are taking place kind of behind the scenes mm -hmm. and, and added. I um, right. love that. Share with our viewers a little bit of that history and, and where um, we see, you know, started and where they sure. came from and, and um, to bring them where they are today. Sure. Um, uh, yeah, I told you earlier when we came in, I actually made some notes because uh, four generations is, is yeah, a lot of dates yeah, to remember. For sure. So, um, but in 1885, uh, our great grandfather immigrated from the Netherlands 
uh, to Muskegon, um, found work there. And in 1907, uh, after he was married, after he had worked a few years here, um, they moved up to Montague and purchased the first 40-acre farm. So in 1907 was the first uh, uh, 40 acres. And then uh, in the early days, they, they had, I mean, they had a few cows. I think every family then probably had a sure. few cows and, and animals, but um, they spent time growing some vegetables on that 40 acres and peddling them up and down the lakeshore here wow. to uh, Michelinda, Sylvan Beach, and, and the Rockdale Resort. Um, in uh, 1929, um, he uh, formed a first partnership with his sons, three of his sons, Claude, Harry, and John, and called Ed Weesey's and Sons. Hmm. Um, through the through the 1940s, uh, a lot more land was purchased along the White River that you see when you cross the river flats there, the muck land. Hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, just one of the interesting things as I, I think through the history of the farm that's always intriguing to me is uh, the 1940s, there was a labor shortage because the war was going on. Many of the young men had to go to war um, and, and uh, they used uh, German POWs as a labor source. Wow. Um, and uh, I remember one of the third generation uh, um, owners of the farm telling me he was just a little, just a little tiny kid, but he remembers being much more afraid of the armed guards that mm-hmm. were on duty watching them than the workers themselves. The guys worked just fine and mm-hmm. just like the other guys. Uh, so just an interesting tidbit there from, from war times on the farm. Um, another interesting thing, 1965, the high expressway came through and split the farm. Um, so there were some fields that we, we stopped using on the, on the other side there. Um, throughout the, you know, starting already in the forties, my grandfather and, and his partner started playing around a little bit with some flowers and, uh, you know, that was kind of secondary to vegetables. They were primary, um, until, you know, in the 19, uh, uh, 50s, a few more flowers, and then in 1965, actually opened the first garden center on Walsh Road. Okay. And uh, so that was kind of the beginning of retail flowers. And then um, uh, in the in the 1980s, there was a big boom through uh, the just greenhouse expansion. We just built and built built greenhouses. Um, uh, there was Eric's, my cousin Eric, who manages our wholesale department, his grandfather had built up a a route of uh, uh, wholesale customers in northern Michigan, and followed by Eric's dad, Rich, um, took that over and just kept building that business. So the wholesale business and the retail business uh, began to grow. And then celery, we did celery for many years, 150 acres of celery, and um, and that was the bread and butter of the, of the farm okay. for many years. Mm-hmm. And then um, things happened with the market and and, you know, uh, diseases and things that just cause us to grow less and less celery, become more focused on the greenhouse business until about 1998 when we um, uh, gave up celery completely. We were just growing 20 acres at the time and um, gave up celery completely. And then we started uh, looking into the landscaping a lot more um, and moving in that direction. Nice. So, um and then, uh, you know, other notice of notable uh, dates, maybe um, 1990, around 1998, 99, we started a gar- the Garden Center in Manistee. Then in uh, 2006, the Hart Garden Center, 2008, Nunica Garden Center, and uh, in 2012, added a service of, of weddings. So we do some wow. some weddings. And don't worry, Ryan and I do not do the wedding. No, we do not. <laughs> um, we have a fantastic floral designer who meets with brides nice. and, and does a good job with them. So, yeah, that's um, in a nutshell. Yeah. That's, that, and that's an amazing history. You know, if you were to close your eyes and think of, um, you know, what those farmers in the early 1900s encountered Mm -hmm. um, without the means that we have available to us today. Um, Pretty impressive. Um, That's, you know, very admirable Um, from where, you know, what they arrived here, you know, from the Netherlands with Mm -hmm. uh, kind of the shirt on their back. Right. And um, and I wonder sometimes, too, why Montague? Why, you know, what brought them, A, to Muskegon, to West Michigan, Mm -hmm. um, as they landed on the shores of America, and why Montague? You know, I've heard in... I've heard this, the stories is that I think if you didn't, uh, if you weren't given any land from your father, if you weren't the oldest son in the Netherlands, mm-hmm. if you didn't have land, you didn't have much. And they're, they came over for work and mm-hmm. Muskegon had some, some factories opening up and that, so they came for the work. 
And then I think um, probably once they had some money in the bank, started thinking of doing something on their own. And mm -hmm. and um, why Montague? I, I don't know. River so flats? Probably. Uh, yeah. That, uh, I'm, that I'm, soil, I'm, that rich you know, muck yeah. soil. That yeah. and the dikes are just like out in the, like yeah. all of our dikes that we have down on our farm. Right? Sure. I met a customer just recently. He was like, it, it, he was from the Netherlands or, or his family was. He's mm -hmm. like, I love going through the river flats, seeing all the dikes that you guys have out there. It reminds me of the homeland there. That's cool. So, That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Either today or back in the early 1900s, what do you think were some of those those hurdles that had to be overcome in order to grow the business? I think I think the um, some of the biggest hurdles, you know, I remember as a as a kid, uh, 1975 was the first time we Ryan mentioned the dikes that the dike broke and we had a flood, mm -hmm. so the crop was in there. Um, and it's like looking at your farmland and then, you know, a few days after the dike is broke, it's like it's just a big lake of water. It, mm -hmm. it looks like it does on the one side of the, mm -hmm. the highway there. Yes. That it does so, now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so floods were always a concern um, with heavy rains or a dam breaking up the White River, I think, is usually what caused it. Um, in 19, I think it was 1986, 86. 86. So that's more memorable for mm -hmm. Ryan and I. Mm -hmm. I was six and I was holding, <laughs> I was holding sandbags open. Can you so, believe it? Yeah, I, I remember wow. doing that so vividly being down there and holding sandbags for guys to fill. Oh uh, my goodness. Yeah. 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 So that, that was, that brought some challenges. And then there were always, you know, with uh, any agricultural crop, you talk to any farmer, it's always diseases and drought <laughs> and insects. And, uh, but all of that, you know, that comes with agriculture. It does. Yeah. Um, I would say other challenges were, uh, you know, some of the storms we had in 1998, straight line winds came through here. Um, and that's probably the most destruction I've seen mm -hmm. of the greenhouses, mm -hmm. uh, with some greenhouses getting blown down. Um, over the years, occasionally, uh, in 2011, we had our building where we filled all our trees, older building collapsed from snow on the roof. Um, and it was right before our season of filling the trays and getting going with, with plants. So we moved that whole operation down to our old celery packing shed that we weren't using anymore. For two years, we, we had to fill trays down there. Um, and then I guess, and I think Ryan would agree, the most recent stress for everybody, it doesn't matter what business you were in, was COVID. And sure. with all the businesses shut down. And the timing of that was at a time where we had all the plants were grown and we were ready to open the retail and begin to sell. And uh, we couldn't open the business. And that, those were, that was, that was scary. Sure. Yeah. Um, those, yeah. I'll, I'll never forget, you know, because in our business, like right now, everything's ready for the year to yeah. come, you know, so all of our money input is right now. Mm -hmm. And then they shut down. In fact, I just saw something the other day. I think we shut down the government on March 13, which was yeah. two days ago. Right. Yeah. And to sit there and just not know if you're going to be able to open and you have all the expense sitting there. And, you know, we wanted to open, we wanted to open safely. We wanted to get through all that. Mm -hmm. And we really worked with our organizations and, um, to, to work on doing that. And, um, I'll just, I'll never forget and kudos to even this community the day we opened Oh, and just seeing the cars lined up. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. something I'll never forget. Sure. It, was, it, was, it was very, very powerful. I also want to say some of the challenges, you know, especially flooding. When I think of when our farm meets challenges, this community has always yeah. risen up. I mean, we needed pumps to pump the farm off. There was farmers all around town running tractors over there, wow. um, helping us with that around the clock. And um, Even as lately as, you know, our, our greenhouses, when you think about the winter, no one really thinks about the greenhouses, but if they're not heated, which many of them are now, so it can melt some of that snow off, but if they're not heated and we lose power, hmm. Um, hmm. we have to get generators and we have tractors all over and one of our tractors is down, there's always a farmer down the road that would help and we would do the same, of course, but like Mark said, the community that comes out and helps... Yeah. Um, it's really heartwarming. <laughs> I love that. That's that. awesome. Yeah. yeah. And and that kind of leads into my next question of um, sharing with um, our viewers those victories. And mm -hmm. I think that that falls in that category. Yeah. Of those um, overcoming the, you know, mother nature, overcoming, um, you know, the, the whatever might come in your way, um, whether it be COVID or... Mm -hmm. um, blight, whatever it yeah. might be. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, those things, uh, you know, they turn around and, uh, you know, the COVID year turned around and then, 
and nobody could do anything. And so it turned out to be a blessing. Everybody gardened that year. Yeah. Many oh, people yeah. put in new right. gardens. You know? Yeah. Um, and we uh, tried to keep up. It was hard to keep up with the demand once we were able to open, which was amazing um, to see so many new gardeners. And uh, I know Ryan, was he does a lot of uh, soil deliveries. And oh, yeah. there was lots of, uh, of garden beds and, and new soil deliveries and going in um, during that time. Excellent. Yeah, even that celery time when the celery quit for our farm to not grow celery was so strange. I mean, at least to me, I'm sure Mark would feel the same. But mm -hmm. and then to you know to pivot on our family and say, okay, now what are we going to do? And we had these greenhouses, and that's kind of when the landscaping thing started. Mark was yeah. saying, and you know, I was I was more involved with the fields because that was my dad's part, where his dad was more in the greenhouses, and mm -hmm. I was, man, what are we going to do? You know, mm -hmm. and then we went into landscaping, and it worked out really well for us there too. And again. Kudos to the communities that we serve that have um, supported us through the years and stuff like that. So. I was thinking that, too, as far as, uh, you know, Victory's having, you know, open that new store up in the Manistee community. Yeah. Nobody really knew us up there, but very well received in a, yeah. in a short time and continued to be. And then the Heart Store, too, you know, immediately people coming in and uh, uh, just making those very uh, successful stores in, in short time. Great. Yeah. Um, um, Weesies has definitely created a reputation for yourself, too. And I think that uh, contributes to the successes, not only of your Montague location, but also your other locations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the word on the street is that um, you provide quality uh, product, you provide amazing services, and that all goes hand in hand to making a successful business. Mm -hmm. So thank you. any parting message that you'd like to share with our viewers? Man, I just on on the same note, I mean, I know we just said it, but thank you to the community and, yeah. and the chamber has always been great to work with in this in this area and um, really all the chambers that we work with at all of our places. But um, thanks to the community, because it's, it's I always say it's so it's a proud thing to be able to say that you're fourth generation. You don't see that very many no, times in right. businesses. And it's really cool to be out and about. And I don't, I always say there's not a week that goes by that somebody says, Hey, I haven't, I used to work at your farm. My grandpa used oh, to work there. I love dad. that. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's because of, I, I mean, I'll, I'll say it's great to have great partners like Mark and my brother's another partner in the business and our dad's before us and our family has always come together and always overcome all those obstacles. And that's mm -hmm. awesome. But the community around us is, is a very important part of it. And, um, we wouldn't be here without without out and all of you. Uh, so. That's a great message. Yeah. Thanks. The community and our employees. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's been challenging sometimes mm -hmm. finding employees, but we've always been able to find enough, and uh, and we're thankful for those who yeah. are with us and uh, and just picking up parts of the of a, a larger company that we used to be just uh, our dads doing it and then it was mm -hmm. us and our dads and now i um, leaning on uh, you know some management positions and things like that so really thankful for that great uh, for those that may want to know a little bit more about your company and um, get some of that information uh, what is your website uh, www.weesies.com. Got it. So All right. If I'm, you Google Weesies, it should come up. So. Okay. Excellent. And I know too that um, pretty active on social media. On yeah. Making those yeah. Posts Facebook, and, Instagram, all right. that stuff. We got uh, we got some people that really enjoy doing that, and that's great. And um, right. in-house guy that runs some camera stuff for us. So we always right. got little videos we try to post out as much as we can. Unfortunately, it always seems like when we're the busiest and get the best pictures, we don't always have the time to right. do that. So right. It's not on the. We board. try to we try to do that, but yeah. Facebook Facebook, Instagram, all that. Okay. So, so, yeah. Good. Thanks, you guys, for coming in and um, sharing with us. Uh, so very interesting to hear about that history, uh, to hear about uh, where the, the company came from and um, where you are today. So kudos to you. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, I think this community has a heart for humanity and also a heart for um, its businesses. So um, yeah, kudos to you folks out there for that support. Um, this kind of concludes our, uh, our We Built This episode. Um, for once again, additional information, be sure to check out their website and social media posts and be sure to like and share uh, their information. And uh, we will see you next time.